Hello friends, welcome to today's video. We're gonna go through all the details for how you can guarantee yourself a time space distortion in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Hope you're all doing great. For anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee and yes, today we are talking all things to do with the time space distortions. Now you've probably come across them already in your game, but they are something that cause a lot of players massive headaches because they sit around waiting for them to spawn and they just aren't happening. Now you get access to this new facility, these time space distortions, in your playthrough once you beat cleaver and you get access to the crimson mirror lands you're going to get this pop-up when you enter that area for the first time and it'll kind of briefly discuss what these rainbow shaped domes are now they're very important for actually a few reasons you not only get really rare items in these time space distortions but you get exclusive pokemon as well that you can't get anywhere else in the game so if you are completing your pokedex you're gonna have to access these and kind of understand them and throughout this video what we're going to do is show you all the steps to take to ensure that you do eventually get one in the different areas around the Hisui region. So to kick us off, we're going to hop straight over now onto our trusty source of Cerebi. This page will be linked in the description if you want to take a more in-depth look at it in your own time, but it basically goes over how the space-time distortions work. Now they are, as soon as you leave the Jubilee village and go into one of the different areas, the for instance, the Corbett Coastlands, Coronet Highlands, Obsidian Fieldlands. Anytime you enter an area, the time space distortion clock starts. And this clock has increments in it, so it's set times where a space time distortion can spawn. And these times all have a percentage next to them. They increase as the time go on uh, until it hits like 40 minutes, where you're pretty much guaranteed to get a space time distortion after 40 minutes. There are things that are going to reset the timer, though, that you want to avoid trying to do and that one of them is obviously going back to Jubilee Village if you do that you're going to reset the timer if you change the time of day if you go to your tent or the NPC character and change morning to afternoon or evening or night that will again reset your timer if you go into any of the sub areas like cave systems or snow point temple in the alabasta islands then that is also going to reset your timer so when you leave those areas timer is going to restart again so you really want to not be doing any of those things for the timer to kind of have that seamless flow so you you get the space time distortion as early as possible now there are chances that it is going to be generated as soon as you go into that area and it is going to be 40 minutes but you want to make sure that you aren't doing anything else to affect it uh, along with it that we're going to discuss in this video to make sure that you do get it within that time frame and you aren't sitting around like a lot of players have been after 40 minutes and saying I've been doing nothing at camp and I still haven't got a time space distortion there are a few things that we'll go through in this video to make sure that you understand what can affect these space time distortions so you can see the first increment when you are in a new area is going to be five minutes now you're going to have a 10% chance of that spawn and if you're in the post game if you beat uh, Dialga and Palkia and you've seen the end credits you're going to have a 20% chance now at 10 minutes you're going to get a plus 20% chance so your overall chance at, tw at 10 minutes is going to be 30% of one spawning 15 minutes is going to be 50% 25 minutes is going to be 75% and then at 40 minutes like I say you should guarantee no no questions asked get a time space distortion in that area if you are doing everything right so the things like I've said that can affect it are leaving going into sub areas and changing the time of the year. They're the big three that you want to kind of try and avoid not to do. The other things that can affect it are actually going into a battle with a Pokemon. Now that'll freeze your timer. If you have your map open as well, that will freeze your timer. So you kind of want to avoid doing any of those things as well. Now flying around the area or running around the area is fine. It's not going to affect when these space time distortions pop up or appear. So just to keep those things in mind, the other information that we've had out recently in regards to space time distortions is from a good old data miner Anubis who put this really useful information out last week about how weather can also affect your time space distortion so as you can see um, a small detail that explains people waiting longer than 40 minutes for distortions if a distortion appear timer runs out while the weather is intense sun snowstorm or thunderstorm the game skips the distortion and schedules a new distortion in 5 10 15 25 or 40 minute increments which is 
crazy. So if you're waiting around at camp thinking, I just need to wait here, it doesn't matter what I do, I'm not doing anything, and a time space distortion will appear, but 40 minutes ticks over and you haven't got one. The likelihood is you've had one of these weathers interrupting when your distortion was meant to spawn and you need to be aware of these. Now there are steps that we'll cover in this video to kind of get around them or you can just reset your timer by going back to Jubilife, back to the area, changing the time of day or going into a sub area. The things that you don't want to do to reset, you can then reset if you've got one of these weathers and want a kind of a quicker way to do it. The issue with doing that is though you could potentially by resetting it, give yourself a longer wait time. It could be like the 40 minute wait if you do reset it, which is a little bit annoying. And like I say, there is a way to kind of wait out the weather without affecting your timer too much. You've just got to be aware of the weather itself to make sure you can kind of bypass it so it doesn't affect when that next space-time distortion will spawn. The other thing before we get into anything is obviously the exclusive Pokemon that you're going to get access to in the different areas around the space-time distortions. Every different area is going to give you a different array of Pokemon and you're going to need access to these areas to access these different Pokemon. Obsidian Fieldlands, you can see these are all the common Pokemon. The rare spawns in this area are going to be be Weavile and the Johto Sneasels. In Crimson Mielands, you can see you can get your common kind of Pokemon. Things, really cool captures as well, like Eevee, Flareon, Umbria, and you're gonna get Snorlax in there as well. And then your rare encounters are gonna be things like, I need an ad blocker as well. Or things like Porygon, Porygon 2, and Porygon Z. And then uh, the other Pokemon that you're gonna get post game. So once you've beat Dialga Parkis in the end credits, you're gonna get access in these time space distortions in the Crimson Mielands to Cyndaquil, Quilava, and Hisuian Typhlosion, which is pretty cool. So you can get the starter Pokemon in these uh, space-time distortions as well. Uh, Cobalt Coastlands, you're gonna get these array of common Pokemon, and then you're gonna get the randomly appearing kind of rare spawns in the Cobalt Coastlands, Magnemite, Magneton, and Magnezone. Again, you're gonna require these for your Pokedex completion. And then the Coronet Highlands, your rare spawns again, You've got these exclusives which are only available in this area the craniodos rampados sheliodon and bastiodon with access to uh, also rowlet dartrix and hisuian decidui and then the alabaster icelands again all your kind of common pokemon there and the rare ones here are going to be oshawott duot hisuian samurott and scissor so that is all of the kind of rare spawns and spawns that you're going to get in these different areas so it is worth utilizing these um, time space distortions when you've got access to them because you're going to need them to complete your Pokedex and things like that. So once you're at Jubilee Village, what you want to do is just come to any area and we'll go to Alabaster Icelands. So now, like I say, once you come into this area, as soon as we come into this area, your timer now starts. So as soon as we're here, it starts. Now, the first thing you want to do is just take a look at the weather. It's not one of the weather that's going to disrupt our time space distortion, so that's good. And we can either do one of two things right now. We can just stay at camp here and just wait it out um, and hope that a time space distortion appears. Or you can do what I like to do and what I've always done and never really had a problem with time space distortion spawning is just fly around the area and kind of look out for shiny Pokemon. And I've had quite a lot of luck doing this. It fills the time in a little bit as well. And it kind of adds to that excitement about if you if you enjoy finding shiny Pokemon. So you can just kind of fly around the area. This is not going to affect your timer. Just the one thing I would say is just to keep an eye on the weather because the weather, like we've already mentioned, can uh, disrupt your time space distortion. So this is all I would do. And uh, what we'll do is we'll speed this up now just to show you how long it does take for a time space distortion to appear. And not to confuse anything, these uh, areas where they're kind of a drop down and you enter into them under the ground in the Alabaster Icelands, these aren't sub areas because you're not entering them. When you enter them, you aren't pressing A to go inside them. These are just parts of the map. So these areas are fine for you to explore if you're kind of running around. Don't think that these are going to um, affect the timer overall.
And there we go. We're going to catch it right on that 15 increment uh, timer. So this is good. So we've got, you can see it over here in the distance. We want to just make your way over to it. I was thinking that it wasn't going to appear. I thought like typically for the video, we'll get a 40 minute timer, but keeping an eye on the weather the whole time, you know, just making sure that we've not got anything that's going to disrupt us. We're not doing anything to disrupt our timer when it can spawn. And then you can see here that we've got it waiting for us. So right now it's not active. So you know when the uh, when it becomes active, uh, you'll see a kind of swirl around it. We'll just sit here and wait for it to kind of pop up. We can kind of talk about uh, what you want to do is just wait. It can take anywhere from like 60 seconds for it to become active. It might take a little bit longer. I think it can be just a random process here. But once you get into the time distortion, you're going to have four minutes to take advantage of catching the pokemon that are there you're generally going to get up to three rare spawns in any time distortion now you're not guaranteed to get that amount and you're not guaranteed to get all of the the, the, the rare spawns that can appear in a time space distortion but you have a chance to get up to three random rare spawns in here as well as all the com common kind of spawning pokemon as well but they will vary from space distortion to space distortion the items are the same as well you're not going to be guaranteed to pick up every Everything, uh, but you want to be picking up everything that does drop on the ground like the shards the stardust because you can you obviously farm for money with those which is quite a, a nice added bonus um, and then you're going to get your kind of evolution items as well and there we go this is it now it is active so once it's like this you want to head straight inside it and then you'll be able to start picking up all the items you can use all your ride on pokemon in here you can use your uh, weird here if you want to get around a bit faster you can see we've got pikachu rapidash there and you got the duot so that's one of our rare spawns we'll not get him just yet or her just yet we will come back uh, and we'll try and explore i'll try and pick up a few items as well around the way to see what we can get but everything that you kind of come across you want to be looking for the kind of turquoise things on the ground espion pikachu so you can see here you get some nice pokemon even the common pokemon are pretty nice to um to to, to catch and it'll help you kind of uh Populate your Pokedex and finish it off as well. And there's our Oshawott up there. So you can see we've got Oshawott, we've got Duot. And like I say, you've got four minutes to take advantage of these time space distortions. And we've got an Alpha Pokemon over here. What is this Alpha? So you can get Alpha. Oh, it is the Duot, isn't it? We've got to catch that. It's an Alpha. Uh, I didn't even notice it before. I was like, okay, we've got to get that one. We'll try and get it. I don't know if we'll catch it with that. We do get it okay we got the alpha so that's good it's not so often you get an alpha spawn as well as one of your rare ones so that's pretty nice uh we get pretty lucky there it's not a shiny unfortunately but it's the next best thing so we get another do what here as well just not a an alpha one yeah so that's i think that's our three rare spawns for this one so i don't think we'll get anything else although we can keep running around we got four minutes to kind of collect items and stuff like that so we want to just make sure that we're making the most of our time in here to get the maximum amount of items and like i said at the start you want to make sure that you're coming up to all these different levels as well see there we get a sunstone so that's going to be quite useful yeah there we go so the time space distortion has faded so unfortunately we did get some nice items we've got some nice pokemon in here um but we didn't get anything like outstanding like shinies or anything but that's just how it goes you know uh, you're not guaranteed to get all of the rare spawns in an area but i mean we got a pretty good haul there with the alpha duo as well which is pretty nice and definitely a rare find so as soon as that ended now our next distortion will be already decided so we can just do the same thing again if we are waiting for this distortion to appear then we can just kind of wait around and do the same as what we did last time obviously fly around or go back to camp and wait it out and you can do the same process in any of the other areas if you want to get the Hisuian Typhlosion or the Cyndaquil then you can go to the Crimson Mirrorlands again just wait it out in this area as you can see we did this earlier waited for around five minutes and we got a distortion pretty quickly after that time and one of the other things we mentioned earlier on was how if you get one of these disruptive weathers what you can do to kind of mitigate it now if you get one of these weathers in an area we were in the Coronet Highlands doing this earlier waiting for a distortion uh, to to appear and we got a thunderstorm appear on us now what our options are at that point is we could return back to jubilee village come back and reset the timer completely change our time of day in the camp area 
or we can enter a battle with a Pokemon, any random Pokemon at this point, because that will then freeze the time uh, for your your time distortion timers to to progress. And by the same account, we can wait out the weather for the weather to change. So what you want to do, you don't even need to continue in the battle, just engage in a battle with a Pokemon or an NPC. Don't do anything. Wait out the weather. Once the weather's changed, as you can see, this even only took like a minute or two for the weather to actually change in this location. Once it's changed, just exit the battle and then carry on doing what you're doing. Uh, either fly around or go back to camp and wait it out for the uh, the distortion to appear. And we got the increment here of 10 minutes on this distortion field, so it didn't affect the distortion appearing at all. So that is one way to get around it. But you're gonna need to be aware of this because just sitting at camp hoping that it will appear most of the time it will but the weather can really interrupt when these do spawn you can get some really nice captures in different areas i got a really nice haul from the crimson mirrorlands earlier on with the porygon and alpha porygon 2 which is a really rare catch and obviously porygon z as well but you can get the um, the fossils from the other areas like the coronet highlands that you're going to need for your pokedex and then the cobalt coast lands for magnemite magneton and magnezon magnezon is available in the coronet highlands anyway but it is available in the space time distortions in that area so friends thank you so much for tuning in to today's video i hope this ex better explains the space-time distortions in pokemon legends arceus remember when you go into a new area that is when your time is starting and you've got a chance at five minutes 10 minutes 15 25 and 40 minutes each of those rolling into one another increasing your chances each time you hit those different increments of a space-time distortion appearing in that area you'll get the message on the screen when the space-time distortion appears and then you just want to make your way to the area you can also locate it on the map it will come up like a symbol like a bit of a hurricane kind of sing symbol I'll show you on the screen right now what it looks like on the map so you don't miss it if you are just sitting the camp and you open your map just to check you can check your map by doing that as well and then you just access it wait for it to activate and then jump into it get all the items get all the, the rare pokemon in there and then just wait around for your next one just don't leave the area don't change the time of day and don't go into any sub areas and keep an eye on the weather and you will be golden friends so have fun in your time space distortions let me know what your best catches are in those i'm yet to get a shiny in them and i've seen a bunch of people already get shinies in their time space distortions so we'll probably jump in and do some shiny hunting in there remember if you like shiny hunting we do stream three times a week here on the channel mondays wednesdays fridays 7 30 p.m uh, utc so if you're around and we'd like to catch some sometime do come by and uh, join in because they're a lot of fun and um yeah let me know your best catches i would love to hear what you have got and obtained in these space time distortions but if the video has been helpful do consider leaving a like uh, it really does help the video and get, share it around with other people to be helpful as well and if you've got any questions about anything i've mentioned in today's video drop them down in the comment section and i'll make sure to get back to each and every one of you so thank you so much for tuning in friends good luck space time distortion hunting that's what we're calling it and have a great rest of your day and i'll catch you for another episode on the channel very soon so until then take care bye bye